Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can calculate the yield to maturity of a bond. I'm going to show you this using a bond that makes annual coupon payments. I'm then going to show you how you can do the same for a bond that makes semi-annual coupon payments. And perhaps most importantly, I'm going to show you how you can do all of this using Excel. Before we get into this, recall how bond pricing works. The formula that you end up using for bond value or bond price is basically given as such, where if you have the coupon rate and the coupon payments, if you know the yield that investors require, which is this R over here, and if you know what the future value or the face value of the bond is, then you can input all of those numbers here and figure out the price of a bond. Now, it turns out that the real world doesn't quite work like this. In other words, in the real world, it is not that you're given the yield to maturity of a bond and you have to figure out the prices. Rather, what happens is that there is an active bond market in which bonds are being bought and sold. And so there's prices of bonds that are established based on demand and supply. There, this, uh, this curve represents here the demand for bonds. This represents the supply of bonds. In the bond market, some prices are established. And so what we get to observe are the prices of the bonds given certain coupon rates that those bonds are paying and given certain face values. And what is unknown is the investor's required rate of return or the yield to maturity. And so my point is that in the real world, therefore, it is not that we are given yields and we have to figure out bond prices. Rather, the calculation works in the opposite direction. So as an illustration, consider the following example. Let's suppose that there is a bond that is maturing in six years. It has a coupon rate of 8% and it's paid annually. And the price of the bond is 955.14. And the question is, what is the bond's yield to maturity? So now you're given the time to maturity. You can figure out the coupon payment that is going to be $80 based on a face value of 1000 The price is given as well. The one thing that you should note here is that the price of the bond is less than $1,000. So right off the bat, you should expect your yield to maturity number to be greater than 8%. Using the equation that I just showed you, this is what things look like, where now you're given the price of the bond, you know what the annual coupon payment is, you know what the face value of the bond is. What you need to do is figure out this R. Now, if you actually try to do this yourself manually, this would be a bit difficult to do because you have R to the power 6 here and solving for that, well, let's just say it's going to take some time. But fortunately, you can do this calculation and solve for R rather easily using Microsoft Excel. And so this is what I'm going to show you now. So what I've done here is that I've written down all the pieces of information that are given to me. The coupon rate, the face value, the time to maturity, the number of times the coupons are being paid per year, which is one, and then the price of the bond. Based on all this information, I can figure out what my coupon payment will be, which in this case will be $80. And then the number of time periods remaining or the time to maturity is exactly six years. Now, it turns out that there are actually two ways in which I can figure out the yield to maturity on this bond. One is using a function in Excel called rate. So equal to R-A-T-E. Now, when you will do this, it will first ask you how many number of time periods are we looking at, which in this case is six because that's the time to maturity. It then asks you what is the payment that you are going to receive through this bond. This is referring to the coupon payment, which in our case is $80. It then asks you what is the present value of the bond today? Present value of the bond is its price today. Now, because payments are going to be coming to you and therefore represent inflows, the price is what you need to pay in order to get those cash flows. So you need to enter the present value or the price as a negative number. So this is very, very important. The price needs to be entered as a negative number. So that's what I've done. I've included a negative sign there. Now, it then asks me, what is the future value? This is the one lump sum amount that I'm going to get in the future, which is the face value of the bond. So that is 1,000. And so now, based on this information, if I just close the brackets and press Enter, I get 9%. Lo and behold, this number is more than 8%, which makes sense. This is what we expected. Now, 
The other thing that you could have done is actually use the IRR function in Excel. IRR is the rate of return that makes the NPV of an investment equal to zero. Right now, the worth of the bond is 955. We're essentially asking ourselves, what is the rate at which the discounted value of all the cash flows that we're gonna get from this bond is exactly equal to 955.14 so that the net present value is equal to zero. So you can use the IRR function as well, in which case all that I need to do then is that highlight all these numbers. Now, please notice that in order to use the IRR function, I literally need to write down each number. I need to write down the price of the bond, the each coupon payment that I'm going to receive, and then the final cash flow. So it's a little bit more tedious because it's easier to do with a six-year bond. It's going to be a little bit more work if you had a 30-year bond or something. But the point is that if you have that information, technically you can even use the IRR function. And so now if I close a bracket and press enter, boom, I get 9% as well, which is not a surprise. That is the yield to maturity of this bond. So since you're having so much fun doing this, let's do this one more time for a bond that makes semi-annual coupon payments. So suppose a bond pays 10% coupon rate and makes semi-annual coupon payments and has a face value of $1,000. This means that each six months, you're gonna get a payment of $50. And if they're 20 years to maturity, then technically that means 40 six-month periods. And the bond is selling for more than $1,000. This means the bond is selling at a premium. This means that your yield to maturity will be less than 10%. And if you wanted to express this in a formula, this is what it would look like, where the price of the bond is right here. The coupon payment every six months is 50. The time to maturity is 40 because it's 40 six month periods. And then you have $1,000. And the way to express this in Excel would be like this, where the coupon rate is 10%, the face value is 1,000, the time to maturity is 20 years. The coupons per year is now two because it's a semi-annual coupon payment bond. And so for that reason, the number of coupon payments is 40. This is two times 20. And each six months, you're getting a coupon payment of $50, which is 10% times 1,000 divided by two. And so now you can do the same thing that we just did. You can use the rate function which requires you to input the number of time periods, which is 40. The payments is going to be the constant $50 payments that you're going to be receiving. So you'll say it's $50 right here. The present value is the price of the bond, but it needs to be entered as a negative. So negative 1197.93. And the face value of the bond is $1,000, which is right here. So if you do that, you'll get the answer, but Please be careful because you're doing everything on a semi-annual basis. Your yield that will come out from this calculation will be equal to the semi-annual yield, which is 4%. In order to get the yield to maturity, which is often expressed in annual terms, you will need to, in this case, multiply your answer by 2, which is how frequently the coupons are being paid. And so this is an important step that you need to do for bonds that make semi-annual payments. So now you get your answer, which is 8%. Now, the other way to do this is using the internal rate of return function that I just showed you. As you can see, it's a little bit more tedious because what I had to do was forecast my cash flows all the way out to 40 six month time periods. But to the extent that you can do that, you can use the IRR function. Again, the caveat being that this will give you the six month IRR or the six month yield. You will need to multiply this by the number of time periods that you're getting the coupon payments for to get the final answer, which is 8%. And so this is how you can solve for yield to maturity using Microsoft Excel.